hear the loudest response ever. How are we doing? <laughs> Thank you, you delivered. You delivered beautifully. Oh my gosh. Wait, is there apple juice on stage? <laughs> Excuse me, one moment. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves for a second. Yeah, what is this? Is this... Spanish cheers, because for those of you that don't know, I am Cuban, so I'm just going to say it, and if you know it, feel free to say it. Arriba, abajo, al centro, pa' dentro. I will not take that like a shot, that's very strong stuff. Oh my gosh, amazing. Oh, thank you all for being here. Oh, there's so many people. So, so many people. Thank you all for being here today. It means the world. I'm Jojo. Lovely to meet you. Um, fantastic. Thank you all. And uh, let's just get to it. I'm happy to uh, answer some questions. Please feel free to come up. Ask anything you want. Nothing is off limits. Within reason. Um, oh, fantastic. I'll just start with you over here in the spotlight. Hi. I'm happy said that because I got a quite a gossipy question. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to ask uh, to Drake before, but uh, you were right, so I'm going to ask Oh him. gosh, okay. I would have asked him how was it to find love on set. So I will ask you how was how was it to work with people that found love on set. <laughs> How was it to work with people that found love on set? Huh. Um, you know, I am a huge advocate for love. So if anyone was finding love on set, I was like, yay, go for it. If it makes you happy and you're happy um, being in love and doing things with, with love and for love, I'm all about it because I lead with love. I lead with my heart. Um, especially um, this Pride Month. Happy Pride Month. Uh, I'm an advocate for love and pride and wearing your heart on your sleeve. So if that's what you want to do and you want to and you want to spread that love and it's healthy and it's good and everyone's on the same page about it, I say absolutely. I celebrate it and respect it also at the same time. Respect all parts of it. So yeah, that's how I see love on set. <laughs> You were quite uh, conservative. <laughs> Say again? No, you were conservative in your uh, answer. Right? I don't okay. know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, so and... nice to meet you. Thank you. Amazing. Hi. Hi, Judge. I'm to say. Um, I just wanted to say, um, great to see you all last season, and um, I'm wondering, what plans there are for Jojo in the next year or two? Is there any, anything that you are allowed to tell us about? Mm, uh, there are definitely some things uh, in the works that I'm not... Uh, some things I can talk about, some things I cannot talk about, but um, let's just say this won't be the last time you see my, my face. Um, <laughs> working on some stuff at the moment. You know, with everything that's kind of going on in the industry, there's a bit of a, there's a, bit of a hold at the moment because of, uh, as we know, the writer's strike that's going on, and we support our writers, and we support that they get a fair deal, and um, that, at least that's what I believe, and I, we also support like our writers like Robbie Thompson, who is also part of the fight, and I am supporting him all the way through. Um, so it, it, for the meantime, at the moment, I'm currently working on my own stuff, some of them, uh, the things that I'm working on are like covers of songs that you know and love. Um, but I actually have a, a cover of a song coming out in the next couple of months. Um, 
So yeah, so keep a lookout for that. I'm also uh, partnering soon with some charities, uh, specifically LGBTQIA plus charities, uh, to raise money and awareness uh, for them. And that's also going to be part of some music that I have going on. There's one other thing, but it's not, oh, I want to say it, but I, I want to keep it a surprise, so I'm going to keep it a surprise, but let's just say it'll be um, something exciting and cool that you could, that, that I'm working on that you could potentially have, like, in your home or something, or you can take with you, or you can buy. Um, <laughs> so, some cool things in that regard. Yeah, and that's pretty much that. Um, my birthday's coming up. Oh, that'll be exciting. July. Any Leos in the audience? I see one hand. What's up? Fire. What's up? High five to you. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, some some stuff like that. And then anything else, unfortunately, I cannot speak on. But you'll be you'll be seeing some stuff from me. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a good one. Hello. Good to see you. Okay, so I had a question for Drake. And I was going to ask you the same one, but I've actually decided to put a spin on this question. So what I'd asked him was, if you were if you were to describe yourself as a mixed drink, what would it be, and why? But I'm not going to give you that one. I have a better one. Okay. So at most of us know, and you mentioned in the fact that you are musically inclined. So if you were to pick a theme song, musical, not TV, musical theater, what would be your personal theme song, and why? My personal theme song, and it has to be musical theater. <laughs> you know, okay, this is my initial response, and I, this is so dramatic, but it shouldn't, <laughs> I don't know if it is the theme song. Uh, you know what, okay, I have, can I give you two answers? Okay, because this is technically, it's in a musical. It's not originally from a musical. It was, you know how sometimes how they do like um, musicals, but they take songs from like bands and stuff like, so like Mamma Mia. You know how they did Mamma Mia with ABBA music? So technically it's ABBA, but it's in a musical. So I'm gonna say um, if I had to choose a theme song like that came off the top of my head that was in a musical, it is uh, Don't Stop Me Now from We Will Rock You, the musical Queen. So I would use that. I would say, don't stop me now, because that is kind of like my energy at the moment, I would say. Um, and then if I had to choose another, like a traditional musical theater song, the first thing that comes to my mind for some reason is um, Being Alive from Company. Beautiful song, beautiful song. It's just about love and owning yourself and owning... Um, that you deserve love in all ways and all facets and you should embrace it in its hurt and in its goodness and everything and like I said, I'm a huge advocate for love and I think it's I think it's very important. So I think that's what that would be, which is hilarious because the character is like in it, like the character is in his or hers, the character can alternate between a man or a woman or whoever wants to play it. Um, the character's like in their late 30s going through a crisis of like not being married yet, so I'm not near that. Uh, but there's something about the lyrics and everything. Stephen Sondheim is incredible. Um, so I really like that. Those are, those are my answers. Good choice. Yeah, thanks. Good to see you. I love the switch of the outfit, by the way. I saw you earlier and now I love this look. Thank you. It's amazing. Lovely to see you. Hi. Yeah, um, so I, we hadn't really like planned out that scene or rehearsed the scene or anything. We literally were just kind of thrown into this built up hotel room, little motel room. And um, we were still, that was, that was literally the first, that was the first episode we filmed coming back to, to filming, you know, the season. So I remember I went out there 
and I was still nervous because I was still getting to know a lot of the crew. I was still like even even getting to know my castmates. Like we, I had my time with Drake, Nita, and Meg on the pilot, and everybody else on the pilot. But you know, still, it's just one episode you filmed, and here we are, like hitting the ground running and filming this show, and automatically my first big thing is coming in and singing Aquarius to a bunch of strangers, um, which is hilarious. But. Um, yeah, we uh, we were directed by John Showalter, our um, one of our producers, but he also, of course, directs, and he's wonderful. He directed episode two, I think, along with episode. Um, I, I can't remember. There was maybe a middle episode there in there, but he also directed episode thirteen, the final episode with Jensen and with everyone involved. It was amazing, and he just said. He kind of was just like, imagine like you're in a music video and just like have a blast and roll all over the place. Nothing is too much. Specifically, funny story, Drake, they didn't use this footage and I'm so sad they didn't, but Drake specifically told me because, again, none of it was planned. I was pulling at Nida, I was pulling at Meg, dancing with all of them and just like messing with them, changing it up every single take. And Drake is sitting on the desk and is just like, for the love of God, like whispers to me, like brings me in. He's just like, Jojo, come here. For the love of God, do not pull me up to dance. Just please, whatever you do, do not make me dance. And so they told me, okay, you're going to do the last take, Jojo. This is the final take and we're going to go bury a music video with it. I said, got it. And that was when I, I went to show Walter and I said, hey, I'm going to change it up. I'm going to, instead of pulling up Meg to dance, I'm going to go to Drake. Um, because I was just like, I want to see what that would do. And I kind of wanted to poke at Drake a little bit and have a little bit of fun and loosen him up because he always says that he can't dance, but he has some moves. So yeah, in the midst of, um, of doing Aquarius, I just like, like, as I'm doing the movements and stuff, Drake not expecting anything, he's just chilling. All of a sudden, I lock eyes with him. And he just looks at me and he's just like, no, 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 no. And I just like saddle up to him. I'm literally just like kind of coming like over this way to him. And I just grab him by the arms and pull him up and pull him in for a nice little slow dance with my head resting on his chest. And it was beyond hilarious. And afterwards he was so upset. He was so mad. And I think he literally went up to John Showalter afterwards and was like, don't use any of that. Do not use that footage. And I just said, I just wanted to do it for fun. But that was a fun time. It was just silliness and, and fun fun stuff. That was literally all it was. It was great. It's one of my yeah. favorite things. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you so much. I'm glad you liked it. Thank you. Amazing. Hey, how are you doing? Hi, I'm fine. You? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. First of all, I want to tell you that since the first time I saw you on screen, I have felt like you were very a very beautiful person inside out so thank you for portraying a character that is so uh, representative and thank you for being you oh thank you so much on the base of this and also on the base of the thing that you said that your theme song would be uh don't stop me now uh we know that the winchesters has been put to a side for a moment uh, as Drake said before, nothing says that they bad in the in the in supernatural, so we will see. But just trying to make a leap of imagination, if Seventeen would have had uh, an uncle like uh, uh, like Carlos, how would their upbringing be, uh, and what values do you think Carlos would have given to them? That's a very good question. Um, um, if, if, if Carlos would have brought them some sort of values, I think, I think something that Sam and Dean could have used a lot more of in their life was someone that could have given them, shown them, I feel like what Carlos does so well that I love is that he shows a lot while he is, has a hard exterior and while he can be very like, a little aloof and kind of like go away, don't bother me kind of energy sometimes. He also has a big heart for the people that he loves and um, he's a real empath. Um, and I think he could have shown Sam and Dean growing up um, empathy, compassion, and love. 
Um, I feel like growing up, that was very hard for the boys to come by. They kind of found that within each other, which I'm grateful that they did, watching their characters kind of find that love with, with each other. But if they would have had a role model like Carlos or someone, um, I think they could have had just that, that nice touch of like mindfulness and empathy and care. Um, I think that could have been a good influence. I think Carlos would have been that. Um, Carlos definitely could have cultured them to the LGBTQIA plus scene um, and everything and had uh, got to introduce them to some of that and um, you know, help them open their minds more to inclusivity and openness in that way as well. Um, yeah, I'd like to think that that could have been that could have been the thing that Carlos could have done to help them and could have, um, you know, assisted assisted them in that way. Also, probably could have taught Sam how to do the holy water hair flip because <laughs> Sam's got the hair. So, yeah, it's amazing. Jared and I have talked about that actually. <laughs> Jared's been like, we gotta get that, we gotta do that someday, we gotta like, both of us do like a holy water hair flip situation, so, tweet it, we'll get it going, absolutely. Thank you, I appreciate it.